Lela cuba akan lela jatuh Abang-abang ya dah jalan tapi lat patuh Dengar kata maknya sabar nak ya Kau lah buah hatiku Nanti bila lat berumah tangga Faham kau buat mak paling bangga Turun air mata dari ibunya Kau lah buah hatiku Kau buah hati Pada hari yang petang hujan kan tiba Terdapat si budak kampung dalam derita Siasatan polis telah tangga Summer 2009 Cartel Records flew us into KL to meet with Joe and the other cartel artists. So it was announced that they had signed Sona One from Malaysia. From Singapore they signed this musician, Richard Jensen. And it was Mike Bandits from Brunei. It's Mike Bandits! It's chaos to be me. It was quite a big achievement to be recognized for the music and what more to be representing Brunei. We arrived to KL that evening and we were brought straight to the club to meet Joe. Because I guess that's what he does. <laughs> we introduced ourselves and he was like telling us to have a seat and which one of y'all spit this line and you know just chopped it up with the man. That's when we got to know Joe better. And he was explaining to us what his plan was and why he chose us to join his record label. It was this idea of picking out the best hip hop music from the region. Yeah, just being around him at that time felt pretty surreal. My name is Nick, I'm 25 and I've been living in Brunei for the past 11 years. Um, originally, I'm from South Africa, but my parents are international school teachers and they found jobs in Brunei and the whole family relocated. In terms of fitting in, it was easy. I think because I was in the international school in environment and it's the same all around the world because we all speak English, we are in the same socioeconomic bracket, so we listen to the same hit music, watch the same movies, have the same pop culture references. I guess we're just all products of globalization. Yo, what's up, girl? Lama Suda, Lama Suda, the Jumpa. I miss the Jumpur, the Jumpur, so Bula, Kaupang, Gil, Kudatang. We call that police call. Slalu, Kudatang, Chapadang, so Burna, I'm back on. Marubal Dari, Kampong. All these other niggas I step on. You already know I'm the best one. Y'all just don't know protocol. Bow for the king of Gadong. Jutsalatan's aggressive, aggressive, Bananjong. If the aim is to make music a viable profession for the youth in Brunei, I don't think it'll happen anytime soon. The only way they could survive is if they blew up internationally and or started promoting and organizing events because events could make money locally. But music alone, not so much. Brunei's market is just way too small. Because you have an entire population of 420,000. Now reduce that to just the youth segment. And then reduce that further to the hip hop consuming youth segment. And I don't know the math, but I don't think it'll amount to a lucrative career for a rapper. Last year alone was a tough time for me as I was a reporter at the Brunei Times. And as you know, got closed down and I kind of also went through a life-changing thing. I have an eye problem and if it wasn't treated, doctor told me that I might go blind. So most of last year, it was kind of me recovering. At the same time, I was debating whether if I'm going to go for that operation. I decided it was better for me to step up because I was thinking how could I have a family if I can't teach my son to drive or take care of my wife. Throughout the whole process, things just fell off and in the end, I still had 
to go for the surgery. Honestly, it was mentally tiring now. I was in Singapore for a few months, then when I came back, it kind of sucked because I couldn't drive. And I was still under unpaid leave. And I just started writing to express my anger. I'm high up, you yay high weight. You dip tight, I'm that long John Silver. Your short bread, yeah, that's right. I'm that pilot, that paper, that flick, that flame. You that coaching, that off boy. I mean, you just lame. I'm technically a student of the scene before I actually got on and grabbed the mic with Zed when he invited me on his mixtape. Prior to that, I only heard like stories of how it was big the little where when J JP started popping up. It was basically an underground scene where people meet up uh, at JP for events or have shows in houses. It's pretty underground. But for me personally, like in, Bru like in Brunei, my bandits is the result of the scene. Because they were raised by B-Style and like the first hip hop groups. So if you see Zed and Bandits, B style, if you ever heard of them, they were technically the cream of the crop. There were other cats doing rapping, but they weren't up to that standard as as the as bandits did or B style. If you ask me like, what's unique about Brunei, well I would say that people like bandits B style, Adam Gross, Reza, Pa, they weren't supposed to exist. Like, especially in a country without an infrastructure for the craft that we're supporting or that we we're passionate about. They taught themselves how to invest into equipment, learning the craft, understanding the craft, and put in the work until up to a point they they are now recognized. When hip hop basically had a Malay identity, it was all correlated to the two fat rap group, Joe and Malik basically. It just showed that it was possible, they showed it was possible to have your own identity and put it back in your music. And what Bandits did is like, they managed to put in that Brunei, Campo, lifestyle living in Brunei in their music. It kind of showed that everything was possible. We had our own identity. Two thousand thirteen, I released Ramadan Flow Two, which was from my Ramadan Flow mixtape series. Ramadan Flow One I released back in 2011. This was sort of a personal solo project that I did. Why I called it Ramadan Flow was because I released it in during the Ramadan period, but as well, all the songs from any Ramadan Flow mixtape has a clip played in the beginning. Basically, all major rap artists have used the word Ramadan, so I sort of used that to my advantage. I picked out songs that had the word Ramadan in it, took a sample out of it and put it at the start of my songs. You know, a bunch of other artists used either a Ramadan punchline or reference, and I thought that was cool. Yeah, so like Cassidy had a punchline, it was a gun reference, and I think it went something like... Cats let the cats blast fast like a Muslim, call my nine Ramadan when I'm introducing them. Even when hip hop started in the States, there was no industry for it. The industry came after the music, after the brands realized that there was this new thing the kids were doing and they could make money off it. I think it's probably the same in Malaysia. Once there's a hip hop scene big enough to gain and sustain mass attention and consumption, then brands and companies will naturally start investing and then it'll become an industry, not the other way around. Who's the biggest artist in Brunei? Aziz Harun, probably. I bet more than 80% of his following and therefore profit comes from work in Malaysia, not in Brunei. Looking forward at my own future or what I want from my music, 
I want to put together a full body of work, not just release single songs here and there. I think a full body is important if you want to be considered a rapper. Because you need to show your versatility, the different shades of your personality, basically show more of yourself than two or three songs are able to reveal. I find it tough though. Um, without concerts to perform at or hip hop ciphers to join, inspiration and motivation can be tough to maintain. Imagine trying to train alone for a marathon, but there are no marathon races to join. I guess sometimes it'll feel like you're running for no reason. But having said that, in all life's battles, you're your own biggest competitor. So I'm gonna do it. I will finish. Uh, I've been promising myself that I would since the age of 16. So that's what I'm gonna do. And afterwards, I guess just put it on the internet like the Beavers and the Chance the Rappers and see what happens. First and foremost, you have to identify this art as a passion in order for it to be meaningful and worthwhile. If you take music as something you enjoy and always have enjoyed doing, then pursue it. But being that it is a passion, you know the ups and downs already. You know the stress that comes with it. And you know what you're signing yourself up to. So yeah, passion isn't always something that's going to be all bright and sunny all the time. It has its dark days and its blocks as well. But that comes with the territory of having passion. I wish all the best to anyone who wants to pursue music or rap, especially in this country. It's definitely something that grows you, molds the way you think. You see things in a certain way and that's the beauty of it. Hip hop allows you to pretty much express anything that's going on around you and your environment and you put that all in, in a rap, in a verse, and you're able to sort of spread this message to a wide audience. I see the younger generation these days and they have the drive and that's how we started off. You have to have the drive to do it independently, just to show the world you can. That's the most important part of it. In the music, bandits always tried to put in Brunei, even the style of the rhyming. If you actually listen and notice the rhyming scream or study it, they put Brunei punya slang into Malay standard, but still acceptable to the listeners. It wasn't off, like, it was all or organic. It was accepted everywhere. And it's kind of more relevant now, because the world, thanks to the internet and the development of technology, the world's becoming a smaller place. It's more universal in a way. And that's how the music and creative industry can come into play. Take, for example, countries like Japan and Korea. They don't shy away from their culture. Everybody knows Japan, and you got K-pop fans everywhere, all around the world. Why can't we be proud of our culture? Criticize it out of love. We can't actually do that here, you know? And that's why the craft kind of speaks to me. One perfect example is the Bandit song I called Made in Brunei. Really listen to it, and you would know what I mean. Bandits pushed the boundaries, and to me, were the first local group to actually give Brunei its own musical identity and link the gap between Brunei's culture and hip-hop. People think music is just music, but to think about hip-hop and rapping, it's more than that. You have to really listen. It's more than just linking words to a beat. It's about telling a story. There's hidden messages. It's technical. There are triple tundras, multi-syllable rhyming. Not many realize that. My band's got signed with Cartel, man. That kind of gave a glimpse or signs of hope. There's a lot of collaborations now with different singers and rappers with different styles. And I'm glad we're heading there. Because before it was all about flexing who's the best. I see the craft making an impact and a platform to show who we are as Bruneians, not just globally, but to our people as well. And hopefully, it'll grow into something so much more and put Brunei on the map. 
Selamat pagi apa khabar Ku sihat wal afia Jumpa dengan rapper Zed Peace membagi nasihat Ada yang baik Ada yang jahat Macam antah Ada yang berlabih Tapi masih lagi mantah Hip hop bukan setakat Cara kamu berbaju Cuba cari pasal Macam mana takkan maju Laju Jangan lambat Bila bertindak Perlu rupu itisku Sudah aku timbak Bagi siapa yang inginkan Musiknya laku Mesti bekerja Macam aku Dua Puluh Empat Tujuh Hatiku paling tenang Apabila waktu subuh Semua di dunia Hanyalah perspektif Tapi ada yang terlalu Fokus dengan negatif Mengucap Diganti dengan kritik Konstruktif Dan inilah Masanya kita akan bangkit Aku made in Bruna Aku made in Bruna Aku made in Bruna